Hello everybody, welcome back to another video in the Meet the Ospreys series by Birds of Pool Harbour. Today we're going to be telling you about a very special lady called CJ7, who is our resident adult female here in Pool Harbour. And while she's not technically a Pool Harbour bird by heritage, she has been with us since the very beginning of our story here back in 2017 and is quickly becoming one of the most important individuals in the establishment of our new population here on the south coast. So we thought she's more than deserving of her own video and we'd like to tell you a bit about her background today and how she came to end up here in Pool Harbour. Despite not being a direct product of translocation herself, CJ7 actually has very strong ties to this process and that's because both of her grandfathers were males that were originally translocated to Rutland Water in the 1990s and early 2000s as part of the first ever Osprey translocation project within Europe. Indeed, her maternal grandfather, White03, became the first breeding male in England for nearly a century and fathered over 30 chicks during his time at Rut Rutland, being a pivotal individual in the establishment of this population over the last 20 years. Her relationship to him means that she is also cousin to three of the current breeding females in the Welsh population and niece to the current breeding male on the main Manton Bay nest at Rutland Water, Blue 33. That being said, CJ7's life actually started very much out of the spotlight as she was hatched and raised back in 2015 alongside one other sibling at a nest which is on private land within the Rutland population and thus isn't viewable to the public. And as is the way with many young birds, when she left on migration that autumn, no one was to hear anything from her for nearly two whole years. So fast forward those two years, precisely to the 8th of August 2017, when the Pool Harbour Osprey team are sat up on a hillside, overlooking our release site and counting in our Osprey chicks to make sure everyone is present and correct. Imagine our confusion when we count nine out of eight Ospreys. Checking over each individual, we quickly found our intruder. It was an adult bird with a blue ring on the right leg, just like the chicks, and so hence had been born in England or Wales, and it had very pale plumage, which indicated the feathers were very bleached by the sun. With a lot of perseverance, we were just able to read the leg ring, and it was at that moment that Dr Tim McCrill, our colleague at the Roy Dennis Wildlife Foundation, loudly proclaimed, Hold on, I ringed that bird! Back at Rutland Water in 2015, that's CJ7. So what's going on here? Why had she favoured Pool Harbour over her natal site at Rutland? Well, the chances are that that spring or summer, she may have actually briefly returned to Rutland when she first made her return to the UK. However, as a two-year-old bird, she would not be looking for breeding opportunities at this stage, but would have been met with a lot of aggression and competition from the resident birds. So, the wise thing to do at this point is to go and look for a much quieter spot to spend the summer. And where better than Pool Harbour? What I suspect she hadn't bargained for was the fact that she would be sharing Pool Harbour with eight young, translocated osprey chicks. Indeed, if she hadn't had the encounters with these birds, I strongly suspect that towards the end of the season, she may have returned to Rutland to prospect for breeding opportunities, as did S1, one of her fellow Rutland-born two-year-old males who was also summering in Pool Harbour in 2017. Another factor to consider here is that females are much less faithful to their natal site than males, on average dispersing hundreds of kilometres, and therefore CJ7's instincts to return to Rutland will not have been as strong as S1's. Instead, CJ7 stayed in Pool Harbour for the remainder of the summer, and during that time she had many further encounters with the translocated chicks. To our great surprise, she then returned in 2018, earlier than she had done the previous year, this time on the 23rd of May, and after a brief disappearance was then relocated on the 15th of June. She then proceeded to remain throughout the summer and repeated her performance from the last year of interacting with a new set of translocated chicks. Thus far, almost all of her behaviours that we'd observed in Pool Harbour were non-breeding orientated. She had spent most of her time catching fish, interacting with other birds and generally exploring the landscape. This behaviour changed very starkly, however, when she first returned in 2019. 
She arrived back on the 1st of April, which is relatively early and much more typical of an established breeding individual. And it just goes to show how much her instincts had advanced in that short period. Within one or two weeks, she was already adding a substantial amount of nesting material to a number of the different artificial nests that we've placed around Pool Harbour. She was soon encountering other individuals passing through the harbour, for the most part female, including a young Scottish female, two years old, named PA1, who, after spending a few hours in Pool Harbour, was photographed less than 48 hours later at the Dovey Osprey Nest in West Wales. Sadly, no interactions with males were recorded, and CJ7 was unable to persuade any other individuals to remain in the harbour with her over the summer. However, this all changed on the 12th of June, when young male LS7, who had originally been translocated to the harbour in 2017, made his return and was photographed alongside CJ7 on one of the artificial nests. The pair proceeded to spend the rest of the summer together, and after interacting, nest building, a few copulation attempts, plus encounters with the new translocated osprey chicks, their bond both to the site and to each other was very well established, and we were all very excited for what 2020 might bring. Over the winter we got to work, installing a live stream camera on their favourite nest in the hope that if and when they returned in the spring we would be able to capture every behaviour for the whole world to see. Almost like clockwork, CJ7 arrived back on the 2nd of April, just one day later than her previous return, but her behaviour was very different to what we had expected. She was only making very sporadic appearances on a few of the nests in the harbour and it took her over a week to finally return to her favourite nest where the live stream camera was attached. However, this all just seemed to be a blip and fortunately as soon as she found it she was back into all her old ways and was immediately adding nesting material, scraping out a nesting bowl and all that we needed was for LS7 to come back safe and well. I must say, at the beginning of the season we were all utterly convinced that he would be back, and it was only as the season progressed that we started to realise that something wasn't quite right. And we weren't the only ones. All over the country, other people were noticing that there was a distinct lack of ospreys moving through in early spring, and a number of prominent breeding individuals did not return to their nests. We believe that the strong easterly winds that persisted throughout March and April this year across Northern Europe may have posed a significant and severe barrier to the migration of many British ospreys. And indeed, some may have been pushed out over the Atlantic Ocean, sadly never to make landfall again. Unfortunately, we believe this may have been the fate of LS7, alongside many others from the Scottish, Welsh and English population. Thanks to the work of our colleagues at the Roy Dennis Wildlife Foundation, we are only now beginning to understand what a devastating impact this has had on the breeding success of ospreys this year. And it is for this very reason that we've been unable to proceed with our translocation project in 2020. Fortunately, it seems that CJ7 is a strong, independent woman who is more than happy to proceed with a breeding season completely on her own. This became very apparent on Thursday the 30th of April, when in the early hours of the morning, she laid her first egg. Now I know what you're thinking, how could this have happened? Did she maybe have an encounter with a male that we weren't aware of? Well, we believe the answer to that is no, because we were monitoring her behaviour and her movements really effectively during that period, and we were aware of a number of encounters that she had had, and almost all of these were with females. There was one encounter that she did have with an individual who we believed to be male, but this was very brief, and we captured it on one of our camera traps out on one of the artificial nests in the harbour. Now, we're pretty sure that none of these encounters would have resulted in any mating taking place, because it's quite a long, drawn-out process in ospreys, which often requires a lot of pair bonding beforehand and repeated frequent copulations during the fertile period. And in any case, all of these encounters took place too long before the laying to have been responsible for the fertilisation of this egg. So we were absolutely certain that this egg was unfertilised. And it appeared that CJ7 knew this as well, as she was quite happy to leave the egg unattended on multiple occasions and she didn't waste any of her own energy incubating it. She went on to lay a further two eggs over the following week and she treated them in much the same manner as the first. And at this point it seemed that the eyes of the entire world seemed to be on her and everyone was feeling very, very sorry for her. 
But we want to encourage everyone that this was not a negative experience. For one thing, it was the first egg laid in southern England for nearly two centuries. For another, it was CJ7's first experience with eggs, and it gave her a really good opportunity to learn and practice those parental behaviours, like egg turning, some incubation, and also not standing on them, all of which will have set her up really well for any future breeding attempts. And the very fact that she was able to produce three such high quality eggs, even without the presence of any male, completely driven by her own hormones, just goes to show what outstanding breeding condition she was in, and once again sets her up really well for any future attempts. As far as we're aware, this is the first time that this behaviour has been thoroughly documented in this species, and we're so happy that we've been able to contribute to the scientific understanding of osprey behaviour. And more than anything, the whole experience just goes to show how well bonded she now is to that particular nest. And should she select a new partner in the coming years, she will undoubtedly bring him to that nest. And hopefully we will be able to continue to gain those excellent views and insights into their behaviour. All of that excitement, and it still wasn't the end of the season for CJ7, because on the 19th of May, another female osprey turned up on the nest alongside her and this time it was a two-year-old bird known as PT0 who had hatched at the Loch of the Lows in Perthshire in Scotland just two years previously. She proceeded to stick around for another day or two and then, like so many others before her, moved on and it was then that we started to see a significant drop-off in CJ7's behaviour at and around the nest. She continues to go back every so often to feed and perch up on the camera pole there and we've had a number of other sightings of her from around the harbour during the last few months. But recently, over the last few weeks of July and early August, we've noticed a definite increase in her activity at and around the nest. And this includes visiting more frequently, taking fish there to eat and also some more nest building behaviour. And we think this is all to do with the fact that the number of individuals in Pool Harbour is now increasing again as they move in on their southbound migrations. And she's being very protective of her site and her nest. And as always, these encounters are fantastic for reinforcing to her what a good spot Pool Harbour is for ospreys, especially in the absence of any young translocated birds this year. And there's a chance that she might be able to form some social bonds with some of the birds that pass through. Meeting a new mate and forming a new pair bond, on the other hand, may be a much more substantial task, and therefore we may not see breeding here in Pool Harbour until 2022 now at the earliest. But remember, next year is going to be the first year that we could expect to see any of the six males that were translocated in 2019 returning to Pool Harbour for the first time, and there may lie her new breeding opportunity. One of the most challenging aspects of translocation and of the process of establishing a new breeding population of ospreys, as we've seen at Rutland time and again, is the challenge of encouraging young breeding females into an area in order to pair up with those natally sight faithful young males. So essentially, Thanks to CJ7, the Pool Harbour Osprey project has already passed one of its greatest hurdles. We have a young, breeding conditioned female ready to pair up with any of the translocated males that might return over the coming years. She really and truly is becoming the star of our entire story here in Pool Harbour. She deserves every ounce of the attention that she gets, and she remains to this day the best candidate that we have for the first female breeding osprey in southern England for 200 years. Thank you all so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let us know on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter, and if you'd like more information about the project or you'd like to make a donation to Birds of Pool Harbour, please visit our website at www.birdsofpoolharbour.co.uk.